Hey friends, now, right at the start of today's video, I do have a bit of a confession that I need to make to you. I have a problem. I am a Raspberry Pi addict. Now, I don't know what it is, but ever since they announced that amazing little ARM-based computer that was so affordable and could fit in your shirt pocket back in 2012, for some reason, every time they announce a new one, there I am, about two minutes after it's been announced, and it's already in my shopping cart making its way to my house. I love the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you've been watching my channel for an amount of years, you'll know that I generally do videos about most of the major Raspberry Pi models. Um, I love using them for retro computing, which is why the latest release is my favorite one yet. Now, this, of course, is the Raspberry Pi 400. Now, they did send a few of these out to other YouTubers for uh, early review, so you've probably seen videos on this already. Uh, not me, unfortunately, but, you know, if you're watching, Eben, I'd love to get one next time. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy to pay and support this project. I do love the Raspberry Pi, and this model in particular, it might look like a keyboard, but in fact, this is the entire Raspberry Pi 400. The entire machine is contained inside this very small, compact little keyboard. So for me, you know, someone who grew up with computers in the 80s and 90s, that was a real throwback to the machines that I used as a kid. You know, computers like the Commodore Plus 4 that I had, the Amiga 500, the Amiga 1200, other machines that are out there like the Spectrum and the Amstrad CPC, they were generally all these kind of small, keyboard form factor machines where the entire computer was inside and really it wasn't until the rise of the PC here in Britain in the mid 90s really when the traditional desktop or the uh, tower form factor kind of took over so seeing this an all-in-one machine back in 2020 really takes me back and actually I was watching an interview on um, the Center for Computer History's website with Eben Upton and he's talking about the Amiga 600 which was his first Amiga and the machine that he learned to program 68k assembly on so he's got a real passion for the Amiga 600 and a friend of mine's recently been talking to Eben and he kind of admitted that this is his version of the Amiga 600 and I thought why don't we pay tribute to the Amiga and actually turn this into the ultimate Amiga emulation machine. So in this video I'm going to show you a few ways that you can transform the Raspberry Pi 400 into the ultimate classic Amiga but first why don't we get this on the desk and have a closer look at the Raspberry Pi 400. And for a size comparison, I've actually got the Apple wireless keyboard that I use on my Mac here in my home office. And as you can see, they are virtually the same size. So you get all of that power packed in to that little keyboard. And it is actually quite a nice looking keyboard. It doesn't feel too cheap and nasty. And in terms of the layout, I mean, it's nothing out of the ordinary. It looks like a pretty standard PC keyboard, although um, it does have a dedicated Raspberry Pi function key to the left of the left alt key there um, and it does feel like it will be all right to type on actually I mean as I mentioned before I was a bit worried that it was going to be a kind of like a cheap 10 pound eBay keyboard but um, it doesn't feel premium or anything like that but it definitely feels like it would be satisfactory to type on and on the back of the Raspberry Pi 400 it's actually got quite a generous amount of I.O. ports on there. I do love the fact that the um, the GPIO port is now like a proper plug-in connector. Kind of looks a bit like a, an IDE connector or something like that. Because in the past I've had, you know, serial cables and stuff plugged in on my Raspberry Pis that meant leaving the top of the case off and having little wires traipsing out the side. It always looked a bit messy. So it's nice to have a proper dedicated port for the GPIO pins on the back of the machine. And next to that we have the, um, the SD card port. We have a couple of micro HDMI ports as well. As you can see, there are two of them, and you can run dual screens off this machine. We have the um, USB-C power supply connector, a couple of USB 3 ports, and a USB 2 port, and Ethernet as well. So in terms of, you know, connectors on here and inputs, it's actually quite generous. I've, I've got machines that are several hundred pounds, if not thousands of pounds, that are less generous with their I.O. ports than this machine is, so uh, nice work. And connecting up the machine is really simple. I mean, you really only need three things. You need the power cable, the HDMI cable connected in, and the mouse plugged into the USB 2.0 port, and that is it. Hook it up to a TV or a monitor, and you're ready to go. And the specs of it, I thought I'd quickly run over those. This has got a Broadcom BCM 2711 quad-core ARM V8 chip in here, the Cortex-A72, running at 1.8 gigahertz, which is actually 300 megahertz more than the stock Raspberry Pi 4. But the thing is, this actually runs a lot 
cooler than the Pi 4. I was checking Tom's hardware and they've actually overclocked this to 2.1 gigahertz and the idle CPU temperature was still just 32 degrees Celsius. Now bearing in mind the stock Raspberry Pi 4 runs at around 40 degrees Celsius when it's idle so this machine overclocked runs cooler and that's because of the bigger case and the fact they also managed to build in a massive heatsink inside as well. Now we've got 4GB of DDR4 memory in here as well, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth included, so I do love this lovely compact design, but of course this is not meant to be a review of the Raspberry Pi 400. Let's get to work turning this into the ultimate Amiga. Now the Raspberry Pi 400 has been out for about two weeks now and I've not seen any other videos or guides on getting Amiga emulation running on this new machine yet and there are some problems with a few of the usual ways that I'll show you how to work around but first of all let's do the simplest way of transforming this into an Amiga and at the time of recording this video the only one that fully works without needing a separate Raspberry Pi 4 system and that's by using Amiberry and we're going to be installing this via the amazing Retro Pi Suite which is a fantastic system for emulating all kinds of retro machines but of course the Amiga emulation being a computer is slightly more involved than something like the Mega Drive or the Super Nintendo but when you know how it's not too difficult. And we don't need much to get started, the Raspberry Pi, the USB mouse, a blank SD card ready to go unless you want to reformat the one that came with the machine and Amiga emulation doesn't need all that much space out of the box but if you want a bit of room for your games and maybe I want to add other consoles onto RetroPie eventually a 32 gigabyte SD card is cheap enough these days so we'll go with that. And you will also need the Amiga's Kickstart system ROMs. Now this is important to point out that the Amiga ROMs are still under copyright to this day and in fact the operating system is still in active development. The latest version of the Amiga OS came out in late 2018 and there is a new version in the works right now. So I do think it's important that we support companies who are keeping the Amiga alive and Cloanto, who are the makers of the fantastic Amiga Forever emulation package, actually offer the Amiga ROMs as a legal download for just £1.79 by using a package from the Google store called Amiga Forever Essentials. So that's a really good way to get hold of the Amiga ROMs if you haven't already got them. And you can of course do this on a Mac or Linux but I figured most people watching will probably be using Windows so I'll talk you through how to do this on Windows 10 but you know the process is the same. Now first of all I recommend that you download the SD card formatter tool to prep the SD card ready for installation and it is best to use the official one just so that Windows doesn't have any confusion over the size limits and everything like that. And then we can go to the official Raspberry Pi website, click on software and download the Raspberry Pi imager tool. So install this and then when it's done, click on choose OS. From here, scroll down to find Retro Pi. And of course, we're going to grab the version for the Pi 400. Put your SD card into your PC's card reader, choose it and click on write and then just wait a couple of minutes. And when that's done, you can then transport the card and put it into your Raspberry Pi. And all being well, RetroPie will boot on your Pi 400. Now on first launch, it will ask you for some input configuration. So at this stage, you can either connect a, a USB controller like you know an Xbox pad that works really well, or my favorite controller for Amiga games are these nice Competition Pro USB joysticks. They came out around a decade ago, but they are actually quite faithful to the original sticks that came out back in the 80s. Or if you haven't got anything like that handy, you can of course just use a keyboard and get that configured to get you into the menu. Now we need to configure the system from the main menu, so press A on here and then move to Raspi Config. And from here, I apologise for the low screen resolution but I'll talk you through what's going on. We need to set option 5 and our localization settings for Wi-Fi to work. So go in here, go to WLAN Country and then set it to wherever you are. I'll set it to the UK for me. And then we can go back to Wi-Fi settings from the main menu and connect to your Wi-Fi network. And then we need to go into RetroPie Setup, Manage Packages, and then into the Optional Packages area. And in here, you will see an option for AmiBerry. So select that, and then you want to install it from Sources. And then you'll want to go make a cup of coffee or something and leave it a while to do its own thing. It took around 10 minutes for it to download and install for me. Then give the Raspberry Pi a full reboot, and you will see the Amiga is now an option on the RetroPie menu. 
So next we need to go back to the PC and copy our Kickstart ROMs and some games onto the system. Now, a word of note on how AmiBerry loads games, the best way is to use WHD Load installs. And if you're not familiar with WHD Load, it's a system of installing floppy-based Amiga games onto hard disks, and it is by far the easiest way of doing it, rather than messing around with floppy disk images and having to swap them and everything. And of course, legally, you can download these games, providing you own the original copies, which, you know, as you can see, I've got a couple here I've installed, we're going to go with Lemmings, I've got the original disc. Now you'll want to download these images in the Amiga LHA compression format. Now this is kind of like the Amiga's version of zip files. So we need to copy the kickstart files and the games to a USB stick. And the best ROM to use is the Amiga 1200 3.1 ROM. And after you've copied them onto your USB stick, take that out of your PC and put it in the Raspberry Pi. And then quit RetroPie and this will take you into the terminal. Now, obviously, if you're a whiz at your bash commands, you can do it this way, but for the rest of us, it's a lot easier to use Midnight Commander, which is actually included with RetroPie. All you need to do is type MC and hit return. And in here, you need to just go up a few levels until you're in the top level of the file directory, and then go into media, and then USB will be your USB stick. Find the file that you want, and then hit Tab. And that will take you to the other side of the Explorer. And from here, we need to go into the RetroPie directory, and then into BIOS, and then hit the tab to go back to the left side of the screen. And F5 on the keyboard will copy that file over. And while we're here, we may as well do the games as well. Go up one level, and then into ROMs and Amiga, copy your LHA files into here. And after that's done, we can exit Midnight Commander and in the terminal type reboot and the system will reset. And then we should see the games in the menu on RetroPie. And launching them is really simple. Just select the one that you want and there's no loading disk images or swapping, no messing around. And a lot of games have even got trainers as well. For example, you can set extra lives or choose which level you start the game on. And of course, when we get into this, we've got Lemmings, which is just as fun as it ever was. So if you've got the time and the patience to set all this up yourself, and all you want to do is play Amiga games, this is a really good solution that, of course, is fully working on the Raspberry Pi 400 right now. However, if you've got access to a Raspberry Pi 4, I'm going to show you something in a moment that will absolutely blow your mind. The most incredible Amiga software distribution that will keep you entertained probably until the Raspberry Pi 400 is considered retro hardware. So we'll have a look at that and how to get it running next. And before we get into that, I just wanted to take a quick moment to give a big thank you to this video sponsor, my amazing friends at Readly. Now, I've been a fan of technology magazines ever since I was a kid, and Readly brings you the best magazines in the most convenient way, straight to your phone, tablet, or even your computer. And you get unlimited access to over 5,000 magazines, and you can read as many as you want for just one set price, just $7.99 a month. They're kind of like the Spotify of magazines, and you can do family sharing with titles on everything you can imagine from fashion, lifestyle, education, health, technology, and lots more as well. There really is something for everyone with bookmarking and offline reading, all without the hassle of a long-term contract. Now, obviously, we've all been spending a lot more time at home recently, and maybe you've found that you've got more spare time. Well, it's actually the perfect time to use Readly to learn more about your interests and passions, maybe improve your hobbies, or just use it as a bit of escapism from everything that's going on right now. And obviously, if you're watching my channel, I know you love your technology and your gaming. And there are magazines on here that I've been reading for years, like the brilliant T3. And what's more, you can even read editions from other parts of the world as well. And of course, like everyone, I'm hyped for the new consoles at the moment. And maybe like me, you've been asking the question, PlayStation 5 or Xbox X? Magazines like The Legendary Edge and stuff will help you make up your mind. And they've got the wonderful Retro Gamer magazine on here as well, which I've been reading pretty much since it started. And it's fantastic to be able to take it with you anywhere you go. 
So you need to try this out for yourself and unlock all of these incredible titles for just $7.99 a month for as much as you can read. And to get you started, you know I always get you the best offers. By using the link in this video's description, you can get an entire month of Readly for free. So you can dive in, check out the incredible magazines on there as well. And then after that, if you want to continue, it's just $7.99 a month. And of course, you can cancel at any time. So please take advantage of this amazing offer. Help support the channel. Thanks to our very good friends at Readly. Now, I've covered Amibian before. This is a standalone distribution of Amiberry. It's a two gigabyte SD card image, and you provide your own ROMs. And after that, it gives you everything you need to get up and running and boot your Raspberry Pi straight into Amiga emulation with minimum fuss. And it's got things like USB support to use your files directly from your flash drive on your Amiga. It's also got internet as well, wide and Wi-Fi. You can browse the net like it's 1993 all over again. But with this, you need to install it on your Raspberry Pi first and then update it from there. And afterwards, you can transplant the card into the Pi 400 and it should work. Now, I've been chatting to Gunnar, the guy behind Amibian, and he's working on getting a native 400 version of this out very soon. So if you're watching this video in a couple of months after it's released, give it a try. Full instructions are on his website, which I'll link up in this video's description. But if you want a truly plug and play distribution with everything included, and I mean pretty much everything, you can download the Mega Pi Mega Distro, which clocks in at around 30 gigabytes of files included. There is a lot in there. Now, obviously, you do need to provide your own Kickstart ROMs, of course, but when you do, there is a hell of a lot of software already pre installed and ready to run out of the box. So we'll download the image, I'll obviously link it up in the video description, and this comes in multi-part archives. So if you open the first one with something like 7-zip, that will join them together, and of course we'll download the Raspberry Pi 4 version. And then by using something like Win32 Disk Imager, we can write it to a freshly formatted SD card, and you will need at least a 32 gig card to fit this all on. Now this will boot on the Pi 400, but you'll find that the mouse and keyboard won't work. So this is where we have to use a standard Raspberry Pi 4 to update it first. So connect your Pi 4 to the internet via the ethernet port and boot Pi Amiga. And then when you land on the workbench, hit F12 on the keyboard and then go to quit. And you'll be dropped into the terminal. Now in here, we can type in sudo apt get update and that will download the latest packages from the internet. And after a few seconds, you need to type sudo apt get upgrade. Now this will take several minutes, but when it's done, it should update all of the underlying Raspbian files to the current versions, allowing you to boot Pi Amiga on the Raspberry Pi 400. So wait till that finishes and then put the card back in your 400. And when it boots, I mean, you can look around and explore for yourself, but there is enough software in here to keep you entertained pretty much forever. All the big Amiga programs, games, all set up in WHD load from menus, tons, and pretty much all the big Amiga PD demos are here. Now, this is obviously not a benchmarking video, but everyone always asks in the comments, show us sysinfo, so uh, there you go. This is how sysinfo looks on it. And yeah, I know it's not the most accurate benchmarking tool, but yeah, that, that red line at the top does look quite impressive, I must admit. All you really need to know about this is that it will run pretty much any classic Amiga bit of software with ease. Even the high-end 060 demos, like the incredible Starstruck from Black Lotus, are included and run brilliantly. So there you go, turning the Raspberry Pi 400 into the ultimate portable Amiga. Now, admittedly, there is still a few workarounds that you have to do to get most of these solutions working on it. But, you know, this has only been out two weeks at the time of recording this. I'm sure those problems are going to be ironed out very soon. And I love the Raspberry Pi 400. I've been a fan of the Pi anyway, as I said at the start of the video. But having to have like a separate USB keyboard and then find a case for the machine. And it, it was still a little bit messy to transport around friends' houses or take with you on the road. Whereas this, I mean, a mouse, couple of cables, put it in your bag and you can take it anywhere. So thoroughly impressed with the Raspberry Pi 400. Keep up the amazing innovations, the Raspberry Pi Foundation. If you've got any comments or a question, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. 
And if you enjoyed this video on YouTube, a quick reminder that I do a weekly retro gaming podcast. New episodes released every Friday. Just search for The Retro Hour in your favourite podcast client, or you can get it directly from our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, here's another video I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.